What does it mean, thank you, Mr. Big Voice, what does it mean to be concerned about the safety and security of your community? And to what degree is a reasonable concern? I guess that's a question I'd like to raise this morning. I know some of you are people who take the newspaper, still take the newspaper, and some of you read it online. If you haven't checked it out yet this morning on the op-ed pages, you'll see my weekly column. And I break it down, I think it's rather clear that those of us who are, I'll call myself a conservatarian, I've got some libertarian views and some more conservative views when it comes to certain social issues, although some people may be even more conservative there than I happen to be. I'm a registered Republican, but I was arguing with a friend about this the other day. He's, he's actually in my old time slot at one of my old radio stations, and I pretty much pointed out he always seems to be a Republican first, and then he's an American second, and some other things way down the list. I'm a Republican, but I'm also an American first, and I also have certain values and views that I think have been traditional in this country, and, and they're not out of, out of whack. And I also walk around with a pocket constitution as well and refer to that and have, uh, have been through this numerous times. I was just sharing in our Facebook warm-up video this morning before the program, I was just sharing with people that I learned the constitution as early as the eighth grade because we had a teacher who insisted that we had to memorize large swaths of it, and we reviewed it, as well as the Declaration of Independence. And we had to know all 50 states. He put up a map, and you had to identify which, which, each and every one of those states. And uh, we also had to take a test and know the presidents at the time. We'd only been up to, Jerry Ford was president then. Yes, it really was a long, long time ago. But we had, to, we had to list the names of the presidents in order on our final exam. All of those things we had to do. Now, you might think that's demanding by today's standards, but that's how it was back in the day when we actually had a fairly good classical education. So I bring up all of this because I have been, and I, I'm not alone. I mean, I know a great many people who would be called moderate Republicans and even some Democrats in this community. And we've been talking about this refugee resettlement program, I think it's exactly two years now, this month since uh, some big news first broke about refugees being resettled here from certain parts of the world, which are dangerous parts of the world. Nobody doubts that. But we were concerned not so much about these people coming here because they may dress differently or they may carry their groceries atop their head instead of in their arms. A caller or the emailer the other day who sent me an email being concerned about that. Again, I just scratched my head. You know, it's not illegal to carry your groceries on your head. Um, if you wanted to you know, balance them on your elbows, you could do that too as well. But there's no law against anything so trivial. But this is what a lot of people in this community are getting worked up about, and you stand back and you say, whoa, wait a minute here. You know, to be concerned about this is one thing. And then somebody sent me a message the other day and said, well, you know, they've been, uh, these refugees have been harassing uh, women over in the parking lot at Target. Well, there are worse things at Target. Have you heard about the bathroom policy? And the only people who've been violating that around the state have been uh, Caucasian men. There was a story out of uh, the Boise area some months ago I remember hearing about, and the guy was in there snapping photographs beneath stalls with his cell phone. When I was 15, 16 years old, my friends and I, we'd be, we'd be hanging around the pizza shop downtown where I grew up, and if you saw a pretty girl walking across the street, you'd whistle and ooh and cat call and the like. I don't recall, though, that anybody ever got too terribly upset about that. Today, I guess, in this day and age, uh, you'd be hauled into counseling for doing that. How dare you have a sex drive at 15, 16 years old? We must eliminate that and turn you into a eunuch, which is what they're trying to do with the general population anyway. The thing is, some of these people we're dealing with in this community, and maybe they've just they've gotten so paranoid, they've gotten to the point where they feel that they're not getting what they want. They have completely gone off the deep end on this issue. And I say that because I've heard these terrible stories about people strapping on their sidearms and open, open carry, not concealed, open carry, strutting around in various neighborhoods where you have a lot of refugees and immigrants. Now, are they looking to start a fight? Are they looking for violence? Are they looking for trouble? Is that going to justify, then, their claims? What do they want to do? I used the words yesterday on air, and I used them in my warm-up video today, ex post facto. We have a rule in this country. It, it goes all the way back through English common law as well. It's 
called ex post facto. Ex post facto simply means today the king or the emperor or anybody in government, even in a parliamentary system or in a republic like ours, cannot today pass a law and say, all right, I'll give you just as an example to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. It's not related necessarily to the issue at hand. But let me just share this with you. You cannot pass a law that says, for instance, today, that chewing gum while you walk down the street is illegal, and then start arresting people because yesterday they were chewing gum while they walked down the street. Because it wasn't illegal yesterday. Even if you thought you were going to be able to pack these people into a rail car and send them out of here, or onto a plane and send them away, that's not going to happen. The rest of us have been talking about having what Mr. Trump calls extreme vetting. Now, we're not quite sure what that means. It's obviously he means better than the system we currently have in place. And a lot of reasonable people in this community support that. And that's what I've always supported, too. But I also know that there are a lot of people, if they want to come to the United States and be good Americans and work hard and start a business and then build that business and then employ people and then pay taxes, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We have a lot of Americans who've been here, descended from 10, 12 generations, who simply don't have that sort of get up and go any longer. We've talked about that on the program as well on numerous occasions. I'm telling you right now, you've got people out there, if they had their way, they would line these people up against a wall and gun them down. If they could get away with it. I, and, and I know by the threats they've made to various people in this community who don't agree with them. And I have been the recipient of one of those threats. I'm telling you right now, these could potentially be very, very dangerous people. As I said in the column, it won't be long before they're robbing armored cars just like their brethren who occupied Hayden Lake back in the middle of the 1980s. These are the type of people that blew up the automobile that the talk show host Alan Berg, he was in Denver back in the 80s, he got into his car, boom, he was done for. If I recall, it was an explosion. These are the type of people who will stop at nothing to further their agenda, and they are so whacked out, they believe if they do these things that other people go, well, gee, that's normal, let me get on board. I wanted to also add to this. It isn't just Islam that they're attacking. They're also attacking the LDS church and all of the practitioners. Now, it's the largest of all the churches in this region. And I do know that there are some Christian denominations who do not believe that, that Mormons are actually Christians. What was a Pastor Robert Jeffress called it a cult a few years ago, saying it followed a man and not... I actually went to a baptism at a Mormon church a few years ago, and I never once heard Joseph Smith's name mentioned. I did hear Jesus mentioned a lot. But I don't know any Mormons out there who plan to blow up buildings. Uh, all I know is uh, my, one of my best friends from the sixth grade on, and still a close friend to this day, happened to be a Mormon, and I happened to grow up just a few miles from Palmyra, New York, so I know the story really, really well. And you're talking about some of the most patriotic people on the planet, not just in the United States, and they are overrepresented in the U.S. military because they so love this country. It is the most American of all churches. I come from a denomination, too, that people sometimes think is a little wacky. But the fact of the matter is, we aren't causing anybody any problems out there. So this crowd isn't just out there looking to, uh, to rid this community of all refugees, including those who are already here and some of those who've already accepted citizenship. They're looking as well to start purging us of other religious faiths they don't like. And how are they going to go about doing that? I mean, these people are freaks. I called them Nazi scum on the air yesterday. I don't know that that's... That might actually be an insult to Nazi scum. Somebody needs to do an intervention, and if they're not in jail yet, they'll end up there soon. And our only solution to this is to shun them. To shun them. If you are a decent Republican or a conservative or even a, a libertarian, and I know the Democrats shun everybody who is, uh, <laughs> who is uh, right of center, any Republican at all, even the moderates, but I'm telling you right now, I don't want to be associated with these people. There was a time when I first came to this community that they mostly seemed reasonable. I actually got to meet some of them. But I'm going to guess at the meeting I spoke at in May of two years ago, 
that a lot of the people who were there in that crowd that night who were just curious are no longer no longer involved with these people as well that they've reached a breaking point we don't even want to be seen talking to them I got invited to a political uh, a housewarming event a couple of weeks ago and I was going to go and then I thought well wait a minute some of these people might be there I don't want to rub elbows with them I don't want people thinking they're my friends I don't want people thinking because I'm a conservative Republican or a conservatarian if you will I don't want them to believe that I think the same way that those people do because I don't it's 817 Bill Cowley with you on top story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. How much of this lunacy are we going to allow to continue and besmirch the rest of us? We have legitimate concerns, but we aren't fascist killers. Telephone number if you'd like to reach our program, 736 0300. You can also email me at bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That's bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. A couple of other things we've got coming up on the program today. Steve Millington will be joining us. He's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. We're going to talk about Steve Yates, the state chairman of the GOP, who is, who is resigning. Oh, uh, there's no big secret here. He's going to be running for lieutenant governor. I can't, can't say I know that officially, but I've heard enough on the grapevine to know that that's what he's been thinking about. And, Generally, these things, when you hear it from enough sources, do tend to be, they pan out and they end up as true. He's going to be joining a crowded field. I think the only person not running for lieutenant governor in Idaho is me. I think that, uh, <laughs> seems everybody is tossing their hat in the ring. And the lieutenant governor's job, I think if you could ask Brad a little and get the real truth out of him, he would tell you it's not worth, a, to use the old phrase from John Nance Garner when he was vice president, uh, the vice presidency is not worth a warm bucket of uh, spit. Spit was actually, that's the quote you see, but they had to clean that up. He said something else. <laughs> and so uh, a lot of people want this job, obviously because they see it as a stepping stone, even if it isn't the, the most prestigious job you could ever. You're a placeholder for four years or eight years, or in Brad Little's case, longer. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of these issues with Steve Billington coming up in a short while, but we do have a break. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And just a reminder, if you're listening to our program today, God bless you, but if you're struggling with your hearing, you've got to call Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. Why would you choose Mount Harrison Audiology? Experience. Dr. Pickup is a certified audiologist. She has 17 years serving the hearing impaired. True diagnostic testing will help you to know what the causes of your hearing loss happen to be and will lead to the best treatment options. Trust your hearing to Dr. Pickup. Call Mount Harrison Audiology for your appointment, 208-312-0957. That's 312-0957. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Telephone number to reach our program, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Zero three hundred. It's going to dry out tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be near 70, and then it's going to get cold and rainy again. But you know, eventually this has to come to an end. The climate change people tell us it's going to get so hot we'll fry to a crisp. So obviously they must be right because they don't brook any dissent. So uh, it will get much warmer this summer. Who knows? It might be thousands of degrees, especially after we get done with uh, warring with the Russians and Chinese. Uh, but, no, we will, have a, we will have a very good summer, I'm sure, coming up, and it'll be dry. If you're thinking about building a dream house and you've been postponing it because you didn't want to be out wallowing in the mud, now's the time to call. Get in touch, actually. Go online first and take a look at some of the work that they do at Western Visions, Inc. Russell Smith, who's the founder of Western Visions, Inc., has been in the, the home construction and renovation business for decades now. Uh, this is a, a guy who actually does what you might call craftsmanship, not just... Let's get it up so we can turn around and flip it for as much money as possible. No, he has people who come in who are skilled craftsmen, and you're talking about a property that is built to last for many, many years, but it will be customized to your needs, and you'll be consulted at every step of the process. In other words, you don't sign the contract, and then somebody comes along six months later and says, all right, there you go, take a look. 
He'll be consulting with you all along the way, and you'll have that constant input. If you'd like to know more, and I've seen the work they do. I, I mean, literally, I can testify to it. I've seen the work. It's beautiful. Check out the website, western-visions.com. Once more, that website is western-visions.com. Coming up on 824, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Now, on the flip side of what I've been talking about this morning, what is a welcoming city? I've been reading about this the last few days, and oh, but we need to let the public know we are a welcoming city. Why? Are there people standing out at the city line at all of the, uh, all of the entrances to the community with chainsaws and hammers and whips trying to turn people away? Well, okay, we've mentioned there might be a few, but I've got to be honest with you. You pass, you pass something like this, and they, well, it doesn't mean sanctuary city. Come on. Well, these are all euphemisms, folks. In other words, we don't want to offend the federal government and lose any funding, so we're not going to call it a sanctuary city. But you've got some people involved. What they've done is they've taken their own personal causes, and they've, they've, they've convinced their Boy Scouts that they've got to get behind the leader's personal cause and do this because they don't like conservative media is what they don't like. So we have to call ourselves a welcoming city. All right, well, what happens if the Twin Falls City Council goes ahead and votes and says, all right, we're now a welcoming city? For a day, everybody feels better. And then what? Tomorrow? Is it like one of those Disney movies where all of a sudden these cartoon bluebirds start floating around in the air? And, you know, and as you walk down the street, the little uh, marmosets and other animals come out and sing and talk to you? I doubt it. I think if you drive the president's streets, you'll still see dilapidated old houses. Now, if you want a welcoming city, why don't you actually plant some flowers and actually have people put some new roofs on and maybe a paint job. Because when I drive through town and it looks like the Barrio or some other third world dump in some places, it doesn't seem very welcoming. I drive through and think, hey, I think I'd rather live in Kimberley. So the question is, why would you even bother with this? Are there other issues that this council could be working on that could, uh, that could perhaps be more relevant to your day-to-day -day life? Such as filling in potholes, paving streets, ensuring that they're not taxing you to death while you're doing it, and making sure that when you turn the faucet on, the water still comes out. Some days, I wonder if we've all been the political correctness run amok. Some days I wonder, is there any sanity ever going to be left anywhere in this country by the time we're done? Because you start with this, then they're going to be asking constantly, well, what's the next thing we're going to do? Well, we're going to call ourselves the thingamabob city. Let's spend several weeks debating that. And then we'll move on to calling it the ding-dong city, and we'll have to debate that for a while. Give me a break. <laughs> a welcoming city. <laughs> yeah, we put up a sign. Now everybody knows for sure. All right. Whatever. If that make, As I said, if it makes you feel better and you get a warm feeling deep down in your tummy, you go right ahead and do it. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 33. Steve Billington in studio with me as well. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Well, I was just sitting here listening to you, Bill, and they reminded me of the, in the, you know, I usually watch the weather because Newdorf is a good weatherman. And I know I gave him a plug here, but uh, sometimes the, the, the news supervisor over at Channel 11, I think he's, whoever's doing it, I, is skewed. So the other day I seen a, a promotional positive piece on Chobani, which is great, which is great. But I also know some things about things that happened at Chobani that weren't great for a Hispanic worker who was displaced by uh, an Arab worker, let's say. And uh, so, and I know that from firsthand information. I know her. So we did a positive piece about Chobani the other day on Channel 11. And then we, I uh, noticed that we're doing this, what you're call, talking now, we're the, uh, we're, the, we're the welcoming city. And I say, you know, I guess it's all right until it happens to your daughter or granddaughter. God forbid. You know, I love everybody that is up, wants to love America, wants to get up in the morning, go to work, tow their own weight. You're either contributing to society or you're sucking off of it. 
And uh, I got no use for people that are chiselers who take advantage of it. Every morning I get up, on Monday morning I get up, I have butterflies because off we go. Because I have the business to maintain, family to support, and uh, I get the butterflies about my business still. I'll hang up, thanks. <laughs> All right, thank you. I uh, Well, let, let me just add to that. I... I think that a lot of people in media, and some of them have decided that they're going to be, it was this way back in the 70s, especially in television news. They were simply cheerleaders for their communities. For And, and you've got people in government and the Chamber of Commerce who think, in some cases, that's two hats in one. Uh, but you've got people in these roles who think that's what media should be doing. But media doesn't work for government, and it doesn't work for the Chamber. Media actually is supposed to have a lot of more, a lot of more serious... Um, supposed to be taking, peeling back the layers and looking at what's going on. And, and sometimes that gets lost. But in the defense of the people at Channel 11, there's so few of them left in that building anymore. They're obviously overworked. And uh, just getting anything on the air amazes me. Coming up on 8.30, we've got more on the way with Steve Millington in just a moment. I do want to remind you that it will get warmer, as I mentioned earlier, uh, someday. <laughs> but <laughs> you're still having issues. you got to heat the home every night. Uh, that furnace has been working awfully hard over the last several months. Call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric. They'll come out and they'll do some service work and they'll get the job done right and get it done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winters are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, even Cold Springs. Uh, they'll be cozy. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number is 678-0459. That's 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric. They sell warm winters and cool summers. Steve Millington in just a few minutes.